Welcome to the Web Weekly Highlights. My name is Dan Walleen, and I have a lot of great content I'm going to walk you through that's in this edition of the newsletter. Now, before I do, it's been brought to my attention that apparently last week I wore a red shirt, and obviously this week I wore a red shirt. And to the person that noticed that, who maybe might be in this room, all I have to say is you're in the wrong spot if you're looking for style tips. But I do have a lot of good tech tips. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to cover things on DOM events, the new Angular release, a really cool site I came across for generating data, sample data, and a lot of other great stuff. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you do a lot of web development, then you're probably used to handling DOM events. We need to know as things are clicked, as selections are changed, when they click on a row, or whatever it may be. Well, in this edition, there's a great post called An Introduction to DOM Events by Wilson Page that walks you through all the details you'd ever want to know about events. He talks about how event targets are found, the bubbling process, how to prevent propagation, prevent default behavior, and even talks about delegation and custom events. So if you're going to be working with a lot of DOM events, it's definitely a post to check out. As a web developer, we're often looking for some sample data to kick things off and get started so we can just make sure that our UI renders properly. Well, if you've ever taken the time to write sample data, whether it's JSON, XML, or whatever it may be, you'll know that it's not exactly the most fun thing you've ever done. In fact, I would probably not sign up for a job where your title was Sample Data Generator. So I came across a site recently called generatedata.com, and what it allows you to do is, well, what it says, generate some data. So just as a quick example, we can come in and say, I want maybe first name. And I can select the data type of this, which would obviously be names. And then I can even say, is it a first name? Is it a last name? Is it a combo? And in this case, we'll say it's uh, a female name, maybe, Jane. And then we can come in and do last name. Go ahead and put in some names. And we can do a last name down here. So we'll just do a surname. And you can do a whole bunch more. You can even do cities. And what it will do as we walk through this is actually generate some really good data. Um, I've always struggled with coming up with names when I'm working with some sample data. And this will take care of it. It also allows us to actually come in and you can export CSV, you can target Excel, you can do JSON, XML, SQL, all these tabs you see down here at the bottom. Very, very cool. Well, I'm going to do JSON. So that's what we typically do as a web developer. I'm going to strip out some of the extra white space it'll normally put and do a simple type. Uh, if you do the complex, it'll actually add an outer wrapper property around your array of items. Now, it will let you generate some data for free. Um, if I click on this to try to change it, though, you'll notice it says, hey, you can't change the number of rows. But for a pretty nominal fee, you can actually pay to get your sample data. Now, I'm not associated with them at all, but I will tell you that it's pretty cool. And you can get it for free, though, 100 records. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Generate. And now what it's going to do is spit out a whole large JSON array with first name, last name, and city. And you can add as many properties as you want. Now I can obviously take this, plug it into my app, and now I have some sample data to work with. So if you're interested in that, you can go to this generatedata.com. Very cool site for speeding up the process of working with sample data. The next item I want to highlight is a really nice presentation on ECMAScript 6 by E.L. Vardy. And E.L. does a just phenomenal job, I think, of highlighting the major features that are coming. And I wish they'd come sooner than later, because we'll have things like modules, we'll have classes, constructors. You can switch variable values much easier than we do now, where we maybe we have x and y. We want to switch them out, so we make a temp variable and stuff like that. And you can actually walk through this presentation. You can see it's up on SlideShare. And it provides a great way to get all kinds of good new stuff about iterators, and as I mentioned, classes, modules, and much more here. So I would encourage you, if you're interested in keeping on the cutting edge and you want to learn about what is coming in all these modern browsers out there, then definitely check out this presentation. One of the cool things that's come out recently is the release of AngularJS 1.2. And although this isn't something specifically highlighted in the newsletter, because it's just a general framework release, I want to mention that if you're not on it, and you've been on maybe 1.08 or one of the older versions, you can now grab it. And this is the final official release. In fact, there's a 1.21, actually, that uh, you can get if you'd like. So when you click on this to download it, just as a heads up, 
They have changed things a little bit if you've worked with the older versions of Angular. Previously, to do things like routes uh, and even things like animations, it was all built into the core. Now, it's all modularized, which I think was a great move, keeps the core smaller. And you can get to these other scripts by going to extras, and this will get you to the Angular Animate, Angular Route, and some of the others. So if you're building AngularJS applications, definitely check out the latest release. A lot of great stuff in here that they've added. Every now and then you come across a really cool code snippet that can save you some time. And I recently stumbled across a site called DevTools Snippets. And there was one particular snippet on here that I found pretty cool. It's called Console Save. And what it allows you to do is instead of Console Log, which we're all pretty used to, Console Save will take something like an object literal and actually save it out to a file as basically JSON. So if you ever have a larger object and you want to serialize that out to a file, you can just say Console Save. You can even optionally give it a file name. And what will happen is actually download it, show up in the kind of bottom, depending on your browser, and then you have your data. So definitely check that out if you're interested in this type of extended functionality. One of the fun things about being a web developer is all the names that we get to encounter. I mean, let's face it, since we've been talking just in the last five seconds, there's probably been 10 new libraries released, and I'm sure they have some pretty interesting names. Well, Grunt is not new, and a lot of you have probably used it before. But if you're new to Grunt, it's a JavaScript task build tool, and it will automate a lot of the things that none of us really want to do. So for instance, if I want to concatenate files together to minimize HTTP requests, it can take care of that and automate it. If I want to run Uglify.js to make my code really compact, it will take care of that. And it'll take care of hundreds of other tasks. So there's a nice post here by Mike Consolo, and it's called Get Up and Running with Grunt. And if you're interested, it'll walk you through how to use Node.js and NPM, Node Package Manager, to actually install the Grunt CLI, set up your Grunt file, and get going with automating some of these tasks that we really don't want to spend the time doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So definitely check it out if you want to get more productive. The last item I want to highlight is a new post I put together for AngularJS developers called Canceling Route Navigation in AngularJS Controllers. A lot of times we work with apps that have data, and if the user inputs the data but they haven't saved it, and then they hit the back button or click on the link, they would obviously lose that data by default. Well, in this post, I'll walk you through what Angular does as your routes change and specifically focus on a little event we can tie into called Location Change Start. By tying into that, you can actually cancel events and make it so they can't navigate off to a different route and therefore save their data. Good opportunity to prompt them. So if you're working with Angular and interested in that type of activity or task in your application, definitely check out this post. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Web Weekly Highlights. I'd like to thank Interface Technical Training for letting me use their awesome studio and if you're interested in our remote live training or you want to come visit us here in Phoenix, Arizona, we offer a lot of great classes on development technologies. For the remote live side of things, uh, it's actually really fun. I enjoy doing it because I can interact with you directly. You get to see both boards, you can see the instructor, and it's a really fun way to learn when you can't actually come visit us here locally. So thanks again for tuning in.